Hello again everybody and welcome to another update on the coronavirus and the current situation globally and also in our own country in South Africa. I'm Dr. Scott Berger from Dr. Luke on Call and we are going to discuss today what does the virus do in your cells and we're going to discuss medication that's been a hot topic at the moment all over social media and in the news and the President of the United States have been talking about chloroquine about zinc and then there's some warnings regarding ibuprofen. Chloroquine has been around for quite a while, it's an old malaria drug. We don't really use it for malaria anymore because there's a lot of resistance. Um, so we actually know how the drug behaves, what the side effects are, what the contraindications are and it's easier to sort of um, understand what it does and, and what it does not do and what the dosages is that you can give and that you should be careful of. So we've got to look at the cell to understand how it actually works. Now the cells and lots of the cells in the lungs um, have got a similar appearance. It's got a membrane, cell membrane. Then it's got a nucleus and inside the nucleus we've got the DNA. Then there's these little round little structures called ribosomes. There are other things in the cell as well but for the purpose of the illustration that's what we're going to stick to at the moment. And what happens is the virus comes along. The virus is very tiny. It's got its own little genetic code in. It's only got RNA, which is half, it's not the full DNA. And it's got protein around it to protect it and these little spikes, S proteins. So the S protein spikes are there to recognize which cell it can enter. Now there's a receptor. A receptor is like a door. It's a door where the virus can enter into the cell and uh, the receptor the specific one that we have on the lung cells that is used by the virus to enter is called a ACE2 receptor. ACE2. If that S protein recognizes the receptor it can bind and it can go into the cell. The protein then merges with your membrane and on the inside you get a little virus RNA. What now happens, these ribosomes, the little orange things, they read the code of the RNA. So they go and they read the code like they would read your RNA if uh, the DNA becomes RNA. Read your RNA and starts making protein. And what it actually makes, one of the most important things that it makes, it makes an enzyme called RDRP. Now, I'm not going to go into the full name of RDRP. It's a very long name. But that's a very important component for this virus. Because what RDRP then does, it also reads the code and it starts making new RNA. So another virus. So if this thing is not stopped, it just goes and it makes more RNA and more RNA and you just make baby viruses. So what they found in previous virus studies on viruses like Ebola and other viruses in the past is that zinc can bind to this RDRP and that blocks the process. It blocks it from making more RNA. So it doesn't actually kill the virus. It blocks it. But now we've got a problem. Zinc can you see that 2 plus? Zinc has got a positive charge. The membrane of the cell is neutral, so the zinc cannot get through and it cannot get into the cell. So we need something to open the gates for the zinc to actually go into the cell. And that is where chloroquine comes in. So chloroquine opens the gates for zinc. It's called an ionophore. And if you have an ionophore, you can actually get the zinc to go in the zinc then enters and the zinc binds to that enzyme and blocks the process for the virus to replicate. So the chloroquine is not a cure. It doesn't kill the virus. It just helps this process. There's other benefits for the chloroquine that you know we can discuss in maybe in a different um, lecture or different video, but it's a little bit complicated. But this is the main thing that we need to know about the combination of chloroquine and zinc. 
Zinc is in a lot of our food, in our meat and our poultry, you don't really have to take extra zinc. And remember, if you take zinc, it's not gonna go into the cell. So there's no purpose in having zinc in, you know, if you don't have something else to get it into the cell. That's why we also discussed quercetin before. It's a natural plant pigment product that you get in your fruit and your veg, your leafy veg, your apples, your red onions, your grapes, your broccoli. It's naturally just in those substances and it's gonna help open the cell so that zinc can get in. Okay, so then if we talk about chloroquine, do we have some side effects and problems with chloroquine? This structure that I drew here is a QRS complex. That is a heartbeat. That's how a heartbeat looks on an ECG. You might have seen this before. The problem with, with um, chloroquine is that it lengthens the QT time. So that's a time um, on your QRS complex. And if it lengthens it, it can cause cardiac problems can cause cardiac rhythm problems, arrhythmias, and um, it's not definitely not a good thing and it can be dangerous. So there are various drugs that can do that. There's been a recommendation to give chloroquine with Zithromax, um, it's a type of an antibiotic. Both of them can lengthen the QT time. It needs to be given with caution in specific patients by a doctor and definitely not for everyone because it's a mild disease and your antibodies are still the cure. The antibodies are the thing that's going to recognize the virus, kill the virus, and you're going to be well. And for you to have good antibodies, you've got to be rested, you've got to have your fluids, you've got to have your vitamins, you've got to, you've got to sleep enough, you've got to make sure you reduce or stop smoking and vaping. That's very important. The other thing with chloroquine is that it can cause retina problems, eye issues. It's not that common, especially in short exposure, like if you only take it for a week. It's definitely a risk if you take it for longer. So that's another reason why we've got to look out for it. it. It should not be given in certain skin conditions. So there are certain guidelines in giving chloroquine and not just taking it. But I want to emphasize that it's not a cure. It's something to reduce the replication of the virus, especially in high risk patients. Um, it might be a very good idea to give it to them, but not for the general public. Then, um, a little word about ibuprofen. There's been some word going around and some uh, results going around that ibuprofen actually causes problems in patients because of the lung and the lung tissue and the, the response that they have. So it looks like we should avoid ibuprofen when you treat your fever if you do get a temperature. Ibuprofen in things like mybulin, gen pain, mypadol, um, ibumol, ibupain, nurofen, they all contain ibuprofen. I think that's been um, a mouthful with a little bit of biology. I hope you understand a little bit clearer in what these drugs are. Um, remember, we, we do not have a cure, a specific drug that's just gonna kill the virus. You need an immune system to kill the virus. That is the, really the message of the day. Hopefully this was helpful and insightful. And remember, rest, stay healthy, Stay home. Thank you.